Hello, thanks for watching this video on the brand new version 15.0 and on API security uh, solution. As you may know, I already posted an, another video on 14.1 API protection. So now the goal is just to focus on the new things in version 15.0. And as you are going to see, we merge the WAF and the authentication and authorization part of API security. So first of all, we're gonna use HTTP bin.org as an API server. Okay, it's a public website. We can use it for any demonstrations. It's very simple to use. And we're gonna use as well, of course, a 15.0. So here I have a 15.0 big IP. And let me show you the brand new solution on API security. API security means authentication, authorization, and security. So let's do it step by step. First of all, let's go to the advanced WAF. So on this device, I provision APM and advanced WAF. And I have access to a brand new template in guided configuration. You can see guided configuration version 5.0. I have the REST API security with open API specification file or swagger file. So if you remember in my previous video, I explained what is a Swagger file on an open API file. Okay, so for httpbin.org, it's pretty simple. Let's go to slash spec.json and you get the Swagger file. So you can see all the URI, all the parameters, the response code, and so on. So let's start and create a new configuration step by step first of all give a name and select your open api file or swagger file this one then i have some options uh, i have an option for rate limiting another one for whitelisting or, or blacklisting so let's use a rate limiting so as you can see here in the banner i have a new bullet and let's enable odds for authorization identification as well so next the template reads the swagger file and creates all the entities okay so an entity in the, in the WAF in f 5 waf is a uri is a method a parameter so as you can see i have uh, all my entries and entities and the base pass is slash the response codes status from the swagger file okay so some of them the security settings, the WAF part, so as you can see, it's very simple because everything is created from the Swagger file, the URI, the method, the response. So just blocking or, or transparent, let's say blocking. Authentication and authorization. So before the video, I created uh, an Azure AD uh, provider template. So I just select the one I created. It's based on Joy Token. Azure AD uses only Joy Token. It doesn't use Opac Token anymore. So I just created an application in my Azure AD tenant. I, I just get from this configuration an ID and a secret code. Okay, a secret key. That's it. So it's very simple. So I select my profile. And then I have the rate limiting. So I have a factor. Has as enable auth, my factor will be based on the user, okay, on the source. If I don't enable open ID connect or if I don't enable auth v2, my only factor I can use is the source IP address. Here, I have something more clever, more smarter. So I'm gonna use a user. So perhaps we don't know, but in a five, we have subsession variables or session variables. And here, I need to provide the subsession variable name that I want to use as a factor, identifier. And I'm gonna use my family name. So this information come from the joy token, okay? So I use this factor as an identifier just to count my request. Uh, I will enable the request quota to five, request for one minute. I can enable spike arrest as well, okay? So spike arrest is in case of attacks, for instance, and I can uh, use whitelisting or overriding to allow specific endpoint or or users, okay, like an admin or VP or specific partners. Uh, 
assignment, okay, so I, I need to assign this configuration to a VIP. I will not do it right now, I will do it manually just after to, to show you where are the objects. And at the end, let's deploy. So the template is creating an APM profile, okay, with uh, everything around the authorization, authentication with OpenID Connect and OAuth v2 with Azure AD, and it's creating as well a, a a kind of three with all the path okay for the for the endpoint and it's creating as well a WAF policy with the methods uh, with the URL with the parameters so it's deployed okay perfect so far so good so now I have to assign this this policy to my VIP okay I want to do it manually just to explain you where it is so here in my VIP and I have a backend server to the httpin.org website. So now just assign two profiles. One is API protection. This one is authorization stuff and so on. And the spike arrest, the quota based on the user. And the second one is my security policy. Okay, so the WAF. I should not see any injection or scripting in my request that's it now it's done let's make a test so here i have a postman okay postman is a client to make a, to make api calls so as you can see here i created some some calls one is based on the headers and if i make a call to this slash headers i should see a response with all my headers so far so good easy easy to understand so first of all let's let's do something like that without authentication and i can see it's forbidden of course why because if i have a look deeper in my policy let's have a look one here as you can see if i don't do auto authentication and block reject 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 so i need to authenticate with uh, with open id connect or with old v2 so old v2 okay i will delete the previous token okay and and request a new one so what i need of course is information regarding the authorization server it's as ready for my in my case it's a corporate f51 okay so i have to provide some information with a client id a secret id that you don't see and i request a token so it's pretty simple the the postman connect to Azure ID and Azure ID reject me to something to authenticate or in that case it's an it's an apm so it's requesting authentication then ask me if i want to do a caching and no okay so i have a token here great you can see an id token a lockpack token i have all the token that i need and let's use it so now here i have an authorization header with my token it passed okay makes sense my joy token is valid is validated by apm and i have access to the backend server you can see all the headers and you can see my token if you remember i said five requests for one per minute okay so my my family name is used as a factor okay so you can see when i do more than five requests per minute i'm black so it's, it's very easy okay this is a authentication and authorization part of the api security but in api security there is as well uh the payload the data itself okay in the request so here it's a WAF job and in the WAF it's pretty simple I will just enforce my security stuff okay so give me 30 seconds I enforce my policy and then we should be blocked okay the WAF policy is enforced, okay, enforced means I disable the staging, okay, I learned enough, so 
And in API, you don't have to learn a lot because we know the method, the URL, the parameters, except the length of parameter value. We don't need more. So now the minute pass. Perfect. I can make a new request. Okay. So let's try to make an attack. Okay. So here is a post. As you can see here, I will just inject a, a parameter with a value script. Okay. Script is an attack signatures. And I need to authenticate. Of course, if I don't authenticate, I will have some issues. So let's use the same token. And let's try to, to send the request. And you can see this block. Okay. So this is a default API blocking page. Okay. It's not a page. It's just a JSON response. And you can see the support ID. If I get back to my WAF, to my log request, I should see several requests. Okay. My previous request, if you have a look at 2.30, 20 seconds, this is my slash header request. The, the authorization token is hidden, of course. And here my post with my script tag and it match two signatures. Okay. So this is a, this is a very simple way to deploy API security with the guided configuration and the swagger file. And there is something new as well. It's a new dashboard. When you deploy your, your template, as you can see, since version 14.01, we have a new dashboard uh, in HTML5, and here we have the API protection dashboard. Then on this dashboard, you select, so this is an overview with all your profiles and select the good one, okay? And, and here we are, okay? So the security event, the re access rejection, if I made a mistake or if I try to join to reach the endpoint without auth and the rate limit rejection as well. Of course, I did one. Okay, it was a reject by quota, not a spike arrest. And I have more information regarding the client OS, reputation. I don't have API, IP reputation. So I don't get it. And here I have some more information. Okay, thanks for watching and see you for, for the next video.